Hey, uh, Millard, we're yes, here. Uh, it is the we're dropping this on the third day of July. Um, there are just some quick things. Uh, you know, we're not going to do a super long segment at the end. But I had said that this last couple of weeks were the most critical weeks, maybe in the history of the Angels franchise, because they were tiptoeing on the verge of contention, on the verge of being one of the wild card teams, and the trade deadline. I mean, we've got the All Star break coming up, but the trade deadline is going to be coming up very soon. And for Los, for the Angels, uh, they have to go on a big winning streak, become a playoff team, and patch whatever holes necessary if they want any hope of keeping Shohei Otani uh, beyond this year. And I said this was huge gut check time for the Angels, and they immediately – went on a four-game losing streak. <laughs> now, they won today against your Diamondbacks. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the Diamondbacks, anytime you can win a series on a road against a winning team, that's what Arizona did. And they managed to pad their lead in the National League West because L.A. lost a couple of games to oh, Kansas yeah. City of all teams. So Arizona's looking pretty good heading into the break. But for the Angels, I'm sorry. This is a catastrophe. They, they didn't play well against the White Sox. They didn't play well against the Diamondbacks. And they've got the Padres, Dodgers, and Yankees coming one, you know, one, two, three, four coming up. This They could lose all of those series. Yeah, and, and, they, and they were also coming off a series loss to the Rockies as well. Yeah. I mean, this this is this is like and, – and, of course, look at I, – I, 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 if – they re- if they fall deep enough behind, you almost have to think that they have to look in the mirror and say, we're going to lose Otani. Let's get something for him. Yeah. Is it a high uh, hyperbole to say they're at the greatest crossroads in their franchise's no. history? And no. May, it may be the greatest crossroads that they're ever going to face in their franchise's history because the last player that we compare Otani to is Babe Ruth. And we all know what happened to Babe Ruth when the Red Sox traded him away. What happened with that curse? And if you're the Angels, do you want to move a guy like this? Of course, if he hits free agency and he leaves, it would be smarter to trade him at the deadline. But do you even want to do that kind of business? We're trading away this transcendent talent. This guy can bring in and make you more money than any other player and maybe all of sports. Otani is the breaker of change. He's the queen of all dragons. He's Daenerys Targaryen. You don't want to do bad business with Shohei Otani because you will get burned just like Targaryen, the queen Daenerys, did to all her enemies. You don't want to do a Shohei Otani. This dude is way too good. I think in the end, you want him on your team because why would you not want to have the best players that we might have ever seen? Arguably the Michael Jordan, the Tom Brady of baseball. If this guy, the way he's hitting his ceiling right now, if he is the greatest guy to ever grace Major League Baseball, Ball, why would you want to let him go and make him play for another team? You can't compare him to Tom Brady because this would be if Tom Brady was a great quarterback and also a great linebacker. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like he is a 250 million hitter and a 250 million pitcher. That's why I have no compunction signing him for 500 million because you're getting those two players and saving a roster spot. Um, if the Angels, a super high revenue team, this is not a small market, small revenue team. The Angels are flush with cash. They make piles of money. Not only do they have great attendance, but they have a huge media package. Okay? they Trout is there for the long term. He wants to stay and win as an Angel. But it, that just may not happen. And it's just gut-wrenching that you have both of these players. Both are all-stars. And both, you know, Trout was the uh, presumptive MVP. And now Otani is. And you have those two players on your team at the same time in a league where we've seen fluidity at the top of, you know, we've seen fluidity at the top of the American League West. Yes, it's been the Astros for the last bunch of years, but look, it may be the Rangers this year. What did the Rangers do that the Angels couldn't do? And, you know, they brought in Bochi the last time the Angels were in the playoffs. Bochi was leading the Giants to a World Series championship. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a couple of teams who I think the people in charge should have their jobs taken from them. 
I think almost everyone in the front office of the Angels just jettisoned them. Yeah, and how could you reconcile with your fans if you were able to let a guy like Otani walk or if you traded him um, at the deadline? How could you look your fans in the eye? Because even a team like the Red Sox, when they traded away Mookie Betts, at least you had him in your system the whole time, and then you won World Series with him, and you had playoff dr- droughts and failures and the high notes, and you won MVPs. With Otani, it's not like he's been in this Angels organization for a decade plus and came up through a young pup. You only got to see the greatest years of Shohei Otani, got to witness him in his prime and then he breaks potentially this playoff curse that you're going to have where maybe you actually win a playoff game during Mike Trout's uh, tenure because Mike Trout is yet to win a playoff game and then you let arguably the greatest guy ever leave I don't know how you could look your fans in the faces ever again and say you know what we're an organization committed to winning and putting the best product on the field they're not then, yeah you can't you can't, you can't do both yeah and you know I think that everyone in the Angels front office has to be held accountable I mean, you'd say everyone's gone. Everyone's gone out. And, you know, I would say the same thing, by the way, I would say the same thing to uh, Mazeliak and everyone in the Cardinals as we are, you know, this will be 10 years since their last appearance in a World Series. They've traded away superstars. I mean, look at how many people on this all-star team, you know, from this year and last are former Cardinals. You know, whether it's Gallon or Rosa Reina or last year Alcantara, how many of those players are are winning with other teams? And now they're talking, well, should we trade away Goldschmidt? Should we trade away Aaron? I mean, th- that's been floated around. And in a in a division where nobody put a great team on the field, they are, you know, yeah, they took China three from the Yankees, but they they've been tremendous they've been terrible and this front office has had the car keys for the last decade or so and yeah they've made the playoffs a bunch of years but they're they're not this year and the pennant drought is going to be a you know a full decade at this point and you don't bring in as i said before you don't bring in arenado you don't bring in goldschmidt thinking oh we're hopefully we'll be a wild card team that's a we're pushing our chips to the center of the table to try to be a pennant winner And this team right now is miles from being a pennant winner. And it's, and at some point, you know, at some point there's gotta be a little bit of accountability. Yeah. And if I'm the angels being two games back of a wild card spot, do you push all your chips in and try to make the playoffs this year? And you just try to convince Otani that this is a winning environment. And yes, I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if you've had conversations or gotten indications that Otani wants to listen to other offers and go check out other teams. Because if you're just one winning season away, one you know competitive playoff run away from signing Otani long term, then I think you got to do everything in your power to get as far in the postseason as you can this year. I think you have to. I mean, this is the point I'm making about these next bunch of weeks. They have to fill in all. They have to make a big splash trade. They have to do something to try to win them back. Because if you don't, then you might as well trade him. Because, you know, they the playoffs are within their reach. And you got to be able to take the mindset of, look, at when you get in, we've seen mediocre or teams that had, didn't have great seasons go all the way. Mm-hmm. You know? So it hasn't happened much in the American League, but it's happened more in the National League. But still, I digress. But uh, you have to play that card. Because hopefully say, hey, you know, we'll get to the postseason and 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 go deep. I mean, that's that has to be everything that has to be all the cards on the table. If not, they've wasted two generational talents. And then you everybody has to be that's that would be your season ticket brochure is all the a picture of everyone in the front office holding up pink slips like this with their head down. Like, that's right. We fired everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think the uh, deadline's like the first week of August. Yeah. We've seen the Angels go in crazy slumps before. Like, let's say in a 20-game span, they go like 3-17 and 17 entering the deadline. Then, then, all the then, you, trade, then you trade Otani. Then all you right. just trade Otani. So it really depends on where you're standing as you enter the deadline. If you really think you got a chance of making the postseason, then you go all in. But if you're like, eh, it's looking like a 2% chance, then might as well recoup whatever asset you can for the big That's game. why these weeks are so critical. Well, look at it. It's been why it's critical doing the show with you. Hey, Millard. Hey. We have another great week of shows here. Tell people where they can find you. 
Follow me on Twitter at CreatorThomas24 for my personal account. Look up Locked on Diamondbacks on Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle, and of course, we're on all your streaming platforms. And please hit, hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. And you can follow us at Locked on MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the All-Star Games and wondering if Otani will be in Anaheim at the end of the year and beyond. This has been a Locked on MLB, Locked on Diamondbacks crossover. He's Miller Thomas. I'm your pal, Sully. Let's fist pump for another week.